looking creek crossing I've ever seen. <laughs> wow, we're not going to get down that. The camera crew couldn't start it. It did start first thing this morning. Mate, who does your wiring? It's like spaghetti under here. <laughs> This is going to be pretty steep. Whoops. G'day guys, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to the beautiful Mount Disappointment State Forest. We've got a vehicle stuck behind me. Now to find out how we got ourselves into this predicament, make sure you watch this episode. This is Life Off Road. We got out here first thing this morning. Simon's be here at eight o'clock. And we get here and there's only one guy up. Everyone else is still in bed. They were there at seven o'clock, <laughs> literally as we were rolling out of our swags. Last night, we decided it'd be a great idea to go for a bit of a night drive. Simon was obviously still getting his beauty sleep. Today we're doing Australian toad in the hole with a little bit of twist. First thing we do is we throw a little bit of cheese in and we crispen that up on the bottom of the base, throw the egg in, fry that up, flip it over with a bit more cheese and we are good to go. Quick, simple and easy and a great way to kick off our day out here camping in the beautiful Mount Disappointment State Forest. Quick pack of camp, put the fire out, did all the duties of cleaning up, make sure we left the place better than we found it. Off to Blackman's Road. Hey, it was a nice clear blue morning this morning, it was pretty cold. Steve, have a great night's sleep. We had the high rise 1550, that was awesome. The high rise 1550 is an absolute corker. One thing I love about the rooftop tents is the ease of setup, even with a Z rise, it was just so easy to get it up and down. It's a fantastic design, it's so roomy inside. Now you don't really notice in the normal flip tents until you get one of the Z rises where you've got that extra space, just the difference it makes. The it? clamshell design is good and it's nice and quick, but it does limit you to about six foot tall. Anything taller than that, you just don't have room in the mattress because of the way the tent tapers down to the mattress base. The high rise, 2.1 meters long, is just massive, massive, massive space. So it's converted a few people that have always wanted a rooftop tent but found them a bit claustrophobic or a bit closed in. We're heading down to the valley and that's where we came across the first track. Holy hell, Troy, just the entry to the hill climb. All right, guys, everyone jump out, come down, have a look. From there, we all jumped out, had a bit of a suss of the track for the day. So we walked over and I had to check my calendar to make sure it wasn't April Fool's Day because he'd pulled up in front of the gnarliest looking creek crossing I've ever seen. And I'm looking and I'm thinking to myself, wow, we're not going to get down that. <laughs> that's pretty intense, that's pretty insane. It's a serious climb and it's going to take some balls. I don't know if we'll get the Iveco with the trailer in past that little creek crossing. So Simon's in front with the trailer on, so a bit of track building to try and make it a bit easier for getting the trailer drawbar through. Obviously with the ditch that deep, it's going to be hard work for the trailer on the back of the big truck. We piled up a heap of rocks, we actually managed to bring it up probably about a foot and it looked really good. We thought that was probably going to solve everyone's issues. Right, let's get the camper trailer off. Oh, off? What? See so how the camper trailer in The camper the trailer and the Iveco in there, yeah. that's not going to yeah, be good. It's not gonna oh, it's not going to hurt. No. The worst thing it'll do is scratch it front and read up. Oh, like that. Yeah. Because the concern was with the car sort of going in and then out the creek, the trailer would come down and the two would jackknife or vertically jackknife. So we peer pressured him into it and sure enough, the old rubber arm went for it. Even after filling the ditch, Simon lined the Iveco up to have a crack, dropped it in. The truck itself drove into the hole no problems, front started pulling out. Straight away we knew we were in trouble. The drawbar on the trailer snagged on the first washout and then as he went down, it just dug straight into the ground like a big snow plough, which was awesome for us because it just smoothed everything out and made it a lot easier for us to get in. Delete this, flatten it out a bit further. Oh, yeah. There's always one in every group, holding the convoy up. Run the winch cable out now. We just need a little bit of extra traction to get that tow bar through the bottom of the creek and we should be good to go. And that little bit of a tug from the winch is all it needed just to help drag that trailer drawbar through the embankment. Once the drawbar freed from the embankment, Simon pretty much drives straight out with the assistance of the winch at all. Long hill climb ahead, it's 
semi-level, then it just gets bloody steep. Up that hill, it was steep and pretty cool to watch the big unit going up the hill. That, guys, is a nerve-wracking, nasty, full-on hill climb, conquered by the almighty Ibeco. Holy hell! That was a wild ride. We'll call you through. We were watching the boys from Resolve Engineering go through. They got a 300 series. It's a really, really trick looking rig. It's got fantastic bar work on it. But to be honest, I haven't seen many 300s on the road that actually get used like this. Even though it's a big 300 series with that bar work that the boys have made, definitely gave them an advantage with the approach and exit angles. Absolutely amazed how easy the car did it. First go, no dramas, and then right up to the top to a really good view. <laughs> that was awesome. The patrols are a pretty good approach to departure and ramp over angle, so I wasn't too concerned about the gully. The only thing I did do was pick a bit of a different line. The deck guy hasn't got a winch, so I've gone through first. I've got front and rear winches. As I went in, I hooked up a little bit on the factory recovery point, just kept persisting and pushed through it. Go, 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 go. Great drive, Evan. Thanks, Simon. All right, Greg, all the way to the top, go for it. Kitty, yep, let's do it. Second low, buttons are in. I thought I kept the momentum just in case it was needed. It wasn't needed. Nice oh, little track. Good track, I like this one. By the power for this lock be with you. Pretty bloody steep, isn't it? You don't realise when you're down there. That's crazy. The shaley rock, it was really loose, but we just got up, no dramas at all. It's not until you're in the driver's seat and you've got the bonnet in front of you and all you can see is the hill climb beyond. You've got absolutely no vision of the drop off and the creek below you, but that was a bit unnerving. Once we came out the other side, we were able to power out with confidence, but not kind of have to overdo it. Apart from dealing with all the different changes in angles and everything and protecting the, the drive line, it was actually a pretty easy drive. Oh, that wasn't so bad. You always build a lot more in your head than what it is in reality. Oh, then we're done. Now that hill was quite steep, now a little bit off camber. Oh, 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 oh he's in trouble. For the road safe car to cop a big whack on the way through and rip the rear bumper bar off, it was a bit of a surprise. Let me guess you worry about this one. Uh, and just out of nowhere there was a big crack. And we thought, oh no, that's a CV for sure. What does that mean? Is he going to be able to drive it? I'll still pop it out. I'll still winch him up. Oh, no, Tom, while you're waiting, I'll let your tyres down a little bit more. When you're accelerating, you're going up in the cast out speed. Yeah. Of course, it's, they've still got drive in the front wheel. Yeah. When it comes down, it locks and it tries to get grip. Yeah. And it doesn't, and it breaks the CV joint. So now I'm rear wheel drive only, and it seems that the rear locker's not engaging properly either, so that makes it one wheel drive. So Greg come to the rescue again, got out the worn gear and helped us out. Greg's a bit of an unsung hero on this trip. He's definitely put in some work. He's definitely done his 10,000 steps for today, that's for sure. Pretty strenuous, I'm not gonna lie, as a steep pull to climb up and down. In my opinion, the basic winch recovery kit you need. You've gotta have a tree trunk protector. Add to that a dampener. You've got a synthetic rope, which most modern winches have nowadays. Put your dampener over the steel component, i.e. the shackle at the end or the hook, where it all joins together in your tree trunk. That's where you want to put your dampener. Most of you would be familiar with a standard style winch ring, which is a single piece unit. Soft shackle goes through and the winch rope goes through and then it runs over the soft shackle. What we've developed, which is a brand new item, is what we call the Blackhawk Orbit. It actually runs on a bearing inside, so as you put the soft shackle through, and the rope around the outside, it'll actually spin. It reduces friction, which will reduce wear and tear on your recovery equipment. So there's no chance that the soft shackle that gets put through the center. Wish me luck for the rest of it. 
What did you let the tyres down to? They're down to 14. We did do a little bit of rear damage to the rear bumper, but we weren't concerned about it at all. We are actually removing the rear bumper off the actual vehicle and we are putting on a, a proper rear bar. Once you dropped into it and you got out the other side of it, man, it was steep. It was really, really steep. So, on long continuous hill climbs, are you building up temperature in your transmission? If you're out four-wheel driving, towing, if you're out there driving in sand, your temperatures go up. If you've got a transmission cooler, it will keep those temperatures stable. Your temperatures can go up anywhere up to another 30 degrees. By having one, it'll keep it at that normal level. They are designed as DIY items and everything comes in the box, everything's cut to size. The one thing that you should have on your vehicle is have a trans cooler kit. We're roughly about halfway up, there was one little step and then there was a second step. One benefit was there was a lot of rock that we were climbing up and that certainly gave us a lot of traction. There was a lot of bouncing around on the vehicles, but there was no problems at all. So at the top of the hill, once everyone had made it, uh, there was a nice little sort of flat drive through the forest. It was really tight and bendy, a bit of fun to drive. A little drama with the trees, this track is quite tight. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just clearing the tracks, the Alveco doesn't quite fit down this one. <laughs> 360 camera down. Multiple shafts. What do you want the track? We actually spotted a whole heap of old mine shafts. You could see like the tailings and that sort of stuff on the side of the track. You could tell because the rest of the area was fairly flat. Definitely stick to the track, eh? So I reckon just around here there should be an old quartz kiln. I reckon we found it, guys. So there's some steps here, there's a couple of shafts and mine holes. We'll pull up and have a look, guys. This looks awesome. It's just really interesting to see back in the day how hard people used to work to get such a small bit of gold and a huge amount of effort just to light the fire in those kilns. Might be drinking out of this one. All the gold they found, and they'd build this massive fire in these kilns and once it was really hot they'd throw all their quartz in and try and melt the gold out of the quartz and then let it settle to the bottom of their pits. In theory there should be gold sitting at the bottom of the kiln. From there we continued off down that track, it wasn't very far from there to the bottom. We followed the ridge line back down to the main road, so it was, yeah, some good views and then we came back out and found the, the camera car that appeared to have a flat battery. I heard a little bit of banter over the radio there and apparently the camera crew guys, once they got down to the vehicle, they couldn't start it. it sounded like a flat battery to me. Was the ignition left on when you passed it? Um, the keys were in. I'll come around and jump start you. Hey mate, look a little stranded. Yeah. Need yeah. some help? Fortunately, we're carrying the perfect tablet for the flat battery. These jump starters are just phenomenal. Hey mate, you haven't even got your bonnet up yet. Now you want to touch it after what I've put this car through. Something's been left on for the last hour while they've been parked here. It's flattened the battery. It did start first thing this morning. Mate, who does your wiring? It's like spaghetti under here. Oh, hang on, it's my car. Luckily enough, I brought the brand new IntelliStart IS2000, which is our brand new 12 and 24 volt jump starter. Simon also had an IS1500 on board, which he's had for a few years now. All right, we've hooked it up. Straight away, the green light comes on. That means the battery is in good condition. This has recognised that there is some charge there and it's now pumping charge across into that battery. Now this is the RRT, Rapid Recharge Technology, which means that you leave it for about 30, 40 to 60 seconds once the motor's running and that recharges the battery in here. All right, give that a crack. Oh yeah! Good old projector and telestart. That's a winner again. 
we certainly noticed a big change in the terrain. Up high we were quite dry, once we started to go down there where it was rutted you could see that there was a little bit of water starting to form. Did happen to notice a cameraman laying next to it but couldn't resist the opportunity to go through it flat out. Got a bit of a splash of mud in but that was pretty good, bit of a laugh for everybody except for poor camera guy. We followed the track along, goes to a burnt out bridge that hasn't been seen for quite a while where there was four massive big trees that crossed this really deep, short, sharp ravine. We all jumped out to have a look. It was absolutely awesome. We walked underneath the bridge and had a look at all the rock formations. Obviously, years and years of water running through there has cleared out all the area and there's this nice bluestone rock all through there. Crazy to see what the 2009 Black Saturday fires did to this region. The forest itself has bounced back beautifully. It's 12, 13 years since the fire, but that bridge is still not repaired. I ran off and had a bit of an explore a bit further down, which Simon ended up following. 30 years plus of coming to Mount Disappointment and I've never been into this corner. This is just stunning. Absolutely, yeah, unbelievable. I can't believe a couple of feet off the track and you wouldn't even have noticed it. And then we've walked along a bit and it just gets better and better the further we go. Just a massive gorge that's cut through here and the amount of exposed rock is just incredible. Leave no footprints, tread lightly. Get down here guys, it's great to get out of the vehicle, take a walk and have a look what's around because this is just a super huge surprise. I wish we had had a bit more time to go for a bit further walk, but we had to get the cars through that next section. Simon's gone, all right guys, time to go. We're all obviously driving the chicken track. Chicken track? What are you talking about? He said, well, you can't drive the bridge. So this is the chicken track. Simon's huge truck just looks wild dropping in. Looks like it's falling off a cliff as it entered. We knew sliders were going to get a bit of a workout. <laughs> well, yeah. He got through no dramas. We followed. It was an easy drive, very slow in. Very impressed with the 300 and the low range, how low it is and how good it can crawl. Walked up out the other side with very minimal effort. Geez, I better take it pretty easy through here. I'm pretty lucky I've got a brand new set of Cooper Rugged Treks on here and they are absolutely phenomenal. Awesome traction. I knew if I took it nice and slow and steady, I wasn't going to have any issues. Did you want a track? That was absolutely unbelievable. Nice and tight going through there. Greg's GQ Patrol. That thing has some serious flex. Just drop off the edge, let the suspension do its job. Tyres are all nice and soft and moulding around the rock. I took note of the water of the Aussie drove around and then it was my turn so I've nosed it up very gently, just crept it in. Gravity's going to help you go down, you don't need a lot of power. Hit the bottom and then point it skywards and just allow the tyres to find their grip. Turned out to be a relatively easy drive in the end, but I think that was more the tyres than that. When it was our turn to go through the river crossing there, it was a little bit technical. Navigation through it wasn't too bad and you could see where other vehicles had been. They had actually got stuck there. They spun the wheels and created some little step ups. We had to hit a couple of them square on. Got some momentum up there and we were able to climb ourselves straight to the top. So all the other cars got through the chicken track, no dramas at all. Unfortunately, road safe, having damaged something in the vehicle, he's either done a diff, CV or a transfer case, we're not 100% sure. Only have rear wheel drive, no locker. He's come down into the track, no problems, gets down the bottom. Gave it a bit of a crack trying to get out the other side. Got about halfway, didn't want to push it too hard, too much momentum, and do any more damage. Tried that a couple of times, and decided it was ready to winch. We actually used the back of the Archie car because there wasn't many trees around the area that were suitable. Again, this area has been gutted by five. The amount of good winching trees around here are a bit limited. We got him up there. I can now say I've been an anchor point for a winch, which was a great experience. We're all really blown away. The camera car, which only had two-wheel drive, drove through this section. We think it would have been a pretty high-paced entry and exit. So after that, pretty much time to wrap up the day. It was great to catch up with everyone and have a couple of days in the bush. Really enjoy these trips, and this one was no exception. One thing I thoroughly enjoy is winding Simon up. It does keep threatening that we're going to have these tougher tracks, so I'm going to really wind him up with the next one, I think, and bring our Jimny and see what that little car can do. I have to say thanks to the crew. Great guys, great trip. Awesome being out here. To get out here and camp with these guys, awesome fun. Welcome to hell, mother <laughs> Hello, my friend, we'll meet again. It's been a while, where should we begin? 
feels like forever. 